Praise the Lord. You can be seated for just a few moments tonight. We give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. I think my parents are watching right now on the internet, so I got to say hello, mom and dad. They know how to work that thing now. Dad said they come over. He said they. He said now that uh, I forgot who it was. My niece. He said that Brittany. That's his granddaughter. Said that Brittany. She's smart. She come over. She said, Papa, Grandpa. All you got to do is talk to this thing. Just push this speaker thing here and you talk to it and it'll put you right on, get you whatever you want on that television. So dad says, I get it. And I say, he names the church on YouTube tonight. And here it comes. Hallelujah. Now, if you're in your 80s and you're not up with technology, it's about time you started with it. You don't never know when you might be boxed in and can't get out. And you need something better than a talk show. You need something that's going to build up your faith. We give honor to your pastor and his wife, and I'm telling you, there's only one Todd Hoskins and only one Jill. And they are totally unique. Totally unique in everything that they do. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to start with verses 1 through 6. And uh, we're having a men's conference December the 2nd and 3rd, Friday night at 7, and Saturday the 3rd, I think about 11 or 11.30. I'm not sure what time you're preaching. Todd Hoskins is preaching. The women always come down. And so we're having our men's conference. Now, our men are a little bit different. They like to do stuff like eat. <laughs> so in order to prepare for this, they've already started cooking. I mean, not, not started planning to cook. Let's put it that way. I mean, they're going to be grilling. They're going to have everything going. Then after church is over, they like a little exercise. They've got, they've got every kind of game you can imagine to play. They've got foosball. They've got... Uh, that thing, a cornhole, they've got basketball, they've, they've got whatever you want to do. And uh, there's even some going to be camping out. Now that was back when it was like, you know, 74 degrees. I think they might change their mind. I said, don't you know it's getting cold? So that's what makes camping out better. So anyway, they like that kind of stuff. We got 113 acres. You all aren't far behind us. You got what, 80 here or something? Big bunch big bunch of property here but we'd like to invite all you men and all of you watching by internet at community family church independence kentucky you can look it up on my website or go to cfcky.com and get information let's all stand together what a celebration second timothy chapter three verses one through five this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And this last portion of this scripture, as many times as I have read this, I've never had this last portion of scripture to leap out and, and just really get a hold of my spirit. He gives a command, not a suggestion. He gives a uh, something that he says, listen, if you're going to make it in these last days, from such, turn away. And just for a few moments tonight, I want to deal with the subject, from such, turn away. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this night. We thank you, God, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the prophetic word that came th many years ago, 2006, at a fresh anointing time.
time. And Lord, you spoke a word over the shepherd of this house. How the thousands that he would be preaching to. We know that he has not even come close to what God has called him to do and to be. And I thank you, God, because wherever his feet shall tread upon, you have given it to him. You have given him the nations of the world for an inheritance. You have caused him to pull his tent stakes out. When others criticized and said, you don't need to do this. But yet he still pulled the tent stakes out and he stretched them. He stretched them so far that no one could even imagine. Why in the world, how could you go from this place and stretch your tent stakes so far? But in the name of the Lord God Almighty, everything under the tent stake of the footsteps of his walk of faith has been blessed. And we've not even seen but just the very peak inside the open door that God has set for this ministry and this house in this location. Rikata Rakoshi Bashlabakote. Bayataya Tokomosha Beshlibukusi. In the name of the Lord God Almighty. Let this word be preached with love, with mercy, with compassion. And God, as your scripture teaches me, with demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost, we give you all the praise and all the glory in the mighty, wonderful, matchless name of Jesus. Before you're seated, can you say yes? Come on, lift your hands, say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, say glory, 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 glory. Now give the Lord a great shout of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Bliki bakai kondai ekanal ontai chakadai in sikmokonye. Padra koshlebekete. Let no man try to slip shoes on you that do not belong to you. Let no one speak shoes upon you that I have not presented. For the journey I'm going to take you on, I've already prepared the path. And I've prepared the shoes and the gospel shoes of peace will come to you at the right time. And you will know these are my shoes. You will not step in someone else's footsteps. You will walk in your own shoes in the path that I have planned and ordained for you. So enjoy me. <laughs> enjoy my praises. Let the talents and the abilities be magnified in your life. Never operate under frustration, but are under, quit, under complete assurance that I've watched you from the time of your conception. And my hand has been upon you. And my eye has been upon you. And my path that I have chosen has been prescribed from the day of your conception. Rest assured, rest in peace and in joy and give me glory and give me praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Let's give him another praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Brother Nick, Brother Nick, when you get those shoes, you can sing the old holiness song. I got on my shoes and I 
feel like traveling because God's got a pair just for you. That's what he said. I never heard such a, I never heard such a remark like that before. Just for a few moments tonight, we're preaching on the subject from such turn away. Our text is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. You see, God spoke to Abraham when he lived in a group of idol worshipers. And God said, Abraham, come out from among them. Come out from among them. For I'm going to reveal myself as the one God, the Lord God Almighty. I'm going to reveal myself as the great and almighty God. And Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And your seed is going to go into a strange land, meaning Egypt. They're going to stay there for 400 years. I'm going to make of your seed a mighty nation. And in your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And when your seed comes out of Egypt, they're going to come out with a mighty hand. When I bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey, and I bring them into this place of blessing, I don't want you to mingle with the other people. I don't want you to be mingling with the gods of the nations around you. I want you to stay away from those other gods, the gods of Ashtaroth, Baal, Chemosh, Molech, Ishtar. I want you to stay away from them. Because my hand is upon you and I've called you to be a separate people. I've called you to be a separate people. You, you see, the scripture says here that in the last days, that's where we are right now. It gave you all of the signs that's going to take place in the last days. And then it says there's going to be a religious system under the guise of a church that's going to have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So what is the power? Is the power shaking? Is the power falling in the floor? Is the power uh, jumping up and down? Is it running? The Bible said in John chapter 1 and verse 12, As many as received him, the Lord Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The power that God gives the church is the power to change. It's the power to change from darkness into that marvelous light. And the moment that you're born again, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And by one spirit have we all been baptized into one body and we've been born again. His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. And in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, that's why the apostolic teaching says this. We are not embarrassed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The power is the power of change. It's the power to make a change in your life. Before Jesus Christ came to this earth, there was no power to change. If you were a liar, you died a liar. If you were a thief, you died a thief. If you were an adulterer, you died an adulterer. The man of Gadara, would, he would have died running in the tombs. He would have died naked. He would have died demented and insane. Mary Magdalene would have died and went to hell with her seven devils. And the man with the withered hand would still be walking around with his hand drawn up. Blind Bartimaeus would still not have his eyesight. Nor was no way of change. There was no way of change. But when Jesus Christ came, he came to set the captive free. He came to give deliverance. He came to give sight to the blind. He came to change them. Him. That's what Jesus came to do. That's why the man of Gadara was free. That's why the woman at the well, after having five husbands and living with somebody else's man, that God came to her and her life was changed. It was changed by the power of God. It was changed by, by Jesus Christ. And I'm here to say today, Jesus came.
came to bring change. He didn't come just to present a gospel of a social club with a cross on top of it. The Bible said in Titus chapter 1 and verse 11, for the grace that has appeared to all men has brought us salvation and teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. The power of the gospel is I don't drink that drink anymore. I don't cuss those words anymore. I don't wear the seductive clothing anymore. I don't go to those places anymore. And any time that you dilute it, any time that you present a word supposedly from the scripture that takes no change, you have stepped into a spirit of apostasy. You've stepped into it. Abraham said, oh, Abraham, I want you to come out. I don't want you going to the feast of Moab because Moab worships the god Chemosh and Chemosh burns babies up. They have drunken stupid parties. They have parties where they're so overlaid with drunkenness involving in their sensuality, male prostitution, female prostitution, bestiality, every evil thing you can imagine and I want you to stay away from it. I don't want you being around Ashtaroth. I don't want you to be around a Molech. I want you to come out from among those gods. I want you to come out from among them. There is no mixture in this. There is no blending in. You cannot blend in this. If you're looking for a blended in relationship, it is not going to happen. And the closer we get to the last days, the more you're going to be obvious and the more you're going to be different and the more you're going to carry a character that this world does not have. The world is going to carry the character of the Antichrist. But you are going to carry the character of the lonely Nazarene, the sweet rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. The Bible said in the book of Revelation chapter 2, he speaks to Pergamos, the church at Pergamos. The word gamos in Greek, it means marriage. So the church of Pergamos was where Satan's seat had been seated. And he said to them, you have the doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? Balaam was hired by Balak. He said, those, those good holiness people down there, they don't do the things we do. They don't worship our God. They don't act the way we act. I, they're so blessed. I can't touch them. They're blessed in the city. They're blessed in the field. Everywhere they turn, they're blessed. But I want a curse to come upon them. And Balaam did everything in his power to curse God's blessed people. But it came back to King Balak of Moab. He said, I cannot curse what God has blessed. I cannot curse them. They're blessed and I cannot touch them. But here's what the doctrine of Balaam said. I can't curse them, but you can allow them to curse themselves. All you have to do is just invite them to the feast of Moab. Let them go down there to that hoot nanny. Let them go down there to that shindig. Let them go down there to that club. Just invite them over there where they're dancing half naked. Just invite them over there where they're having the drunken party. Just let them go to your cinemas where they strip down naked and their naked bodies are flashing across the screen. Just let them go to the cinema where they hear the F word used over and over and over and where God's name is repetitiously used. And if you can get them to go to the feast of Moab, they will curse themselves. They'll wake up one morning and say, what happened to my home? What happened to my family? What happened to my church? Where did we lose our power? Where did we lose our strength? Where did we lose our anointing? 
anointing. You'll wake up like Samson and shake yourself and you didn't even know it was gone and it had left you a long time ago because you've been on territory that you should not have been upon. And the Bible said this doctrine of Balaam I hate but it's come into my church and I'm telling you saints of God you might call this harsh or whatever you want to call it but I'm here to tell you turn away. Turn away. Don't flirt with it. Don't hang around it. If there's a group of people that are calling the name of the Lord but they're walking in sensuality. If they're preaching a message you can't get past your, your habits. You can't get past your, your perverted lifestyle. You can't get past your vulgarity. You can't get past it. And God doesn't see your sin through the blood of Jesus and all and all this stuff that you're just okay. Everything's alright. He said when you hear that I want you to turn away because you are my special people. We've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Everything that's happened in history has brought us to where we are right now. This place come out of a little Baptist church into another sanctuary. Do you think you're sitting on this seven or something acres just because that God just didn't have anything else to do? This is a place of harvest and it's not a place to blend in because the day is coming when the church world is going to come running to you. There's going to say there's no water coming out of our wells. There's no feed. There is no feast coming out of the pulpit. There is nothing to eat. I'm starving spiritually. I don't even know whether I'm saved or not. There's going to be a shift, brothers and sisters. There's going to be a hunger that's going to come to the United States of America. This deadbeat religious machine that is almost taken over this country is going to have to back off because the bride of Christ is going to genuinely shine. You're going to know who's got it and you're going to know who don't have it. You're going to know because these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick in my name. They shall speak with new tongues in my name. If they drink in a deadly thing, it shall not harm them. In my name, they shall take up serpents. And the Bible, John the Baptist said, you're nothing but a generation of vipers. He wasn't telling their grandparents were snakes. He said, you've been born of the devilish sensual activities of life. And you're showing no fruit of repentance. Ah, but he said the very venomous fangs even of this COVID-19 that was birthed in Wuhan, China that was man modified and God only knows how many symptoms. Women's hair are falling out. 35, 36 year olds are having massive heart attacks. All kinds of babies born. What do you call it? Stillbirths. That's happening. The babes aren't even being born. There are more premature premature babes that are being born that are not making it than over 500% since this COVID came. I'm not here to scare you. I'm just telling you, you're dealing with a snake. You're dealing with a venomous poison. Hallelujah. Miscarriages. That's the word I was looking for. Miscarriages are up over 500% than they've ever been before. It's because of the effects. I even had it in my lungs. After I had the COVID a year later, my lungs just could not stop. I mean, for over a month. And doctors. Renfro has had pneumonia three times and never had it in his life. There's been various things that happened. Does that mean we need to cool it? Does that mean we need to sit on the seat and go into a religious form and deny the power thereof? I'm telling you, God's given us power to take up serpents and we need to grab that COVID like a rattlesnake or a copperhead or a cobra and we need to say in the name of Jesus you have no power over my body I serve Jehovah Rapha he is
is my healer. He is my deliverer. I command the hair to grow back in my head. Oh, you young men, you need to say, God, protect my heart. Oh, you young women, you need to say, God, protect my heart. I don't want to be caught into the fat, into the cage of what's going on in this world system. But God, I said, God is going to have a people. Yes, he is. Give the Lord a clap and a shout of praise. Oh, everybody say yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, he said, Pergamos. Oh, Pergamos. You have the doctrine of Balaam. You've allowed the doctrine of Balaam to come in. You've lifted up the bar and allowed the people to act any way they want to act. Wear a, wear a little old slingshot down on the beach and flesh their, flop their flesh all over the place and act a fool. Oh, Pergamus, oh, Pergamus. But there's something else you're doing, Pergamus. You've married yourself to this world system. He's talking about, he's talking to the church. He's talking to the church that has got so flirty with this, with this world system that the hell's lipsticks all over the collar. Hell's cologne is all over them. And as they sing, oh, I love you, Lord. Uh, they got the smell and the stench uh, of, the, of the cologne of Satan all over them. Oh, yeah. But he said, there's another doctrine that I hate worse than that one. It's called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The word Nico means conqueror or, or one in leadership, one that's ahead, a conqueror. And the word Laos means people. It means to conquer the people. And the doctrine of the, of the Nicolaitans, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans was this. It was to present a holy group of men, the only men that could get a hold of God and that way the people would be desperate and the only way they could get help is they had to have a holy man to talk to he said I hate it I hate it I hate it the Bible said that God gave us fivefold ministry that is the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor the teacher for what for the edification of you what for for the working of the ministry hallelujah there's never has been anything in this Bible when Jesus said the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom. It was rent not just so we could get into the Holy of Holies, so the Holy Spirit could get out. And so the Holy Spirit, it's not my job tonight to just tell you how much anointed I am. And, and if you'll throw a thousand bucks down that, uh, that, that I'll lay my hands on you and you'll get imparted the anointing that I have. I don't have an anointing. You don't don't have an anointing. Uh, the anointing is in Jesus Christ. Uh, and wherever Jesus Christ is, uh, that's where the anointing is. Uh, I can't claim to have it. Uh, we operate under it by faith. Uh, I'm operating under it by faith. Uh, but it's not my anointing. Uh, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Uh, he's the sea walker. He's the blind man healer. He's the leopard cleanser. He's the blind eye opener. He's the one that makes a way where there seemeth none. The gifts of the Spirit are not my gifts. They are the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And where the Holy Ghost is, all nine gifts are there. So you have Jesus. You have the anointing. If you have the Holy Spirit, and you should because you can't divide Christ. He's not a piece of pizza. You can't cut him in pieces. He is one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And when you get Jesus, the Holy Ghost comes right wrapped up inside of him and the father comes wrapped up inside of him and the gifts of the spirit are all in Jesus what does that mean that means every one of you are a walking talking revival
revival. The next dimension of this church, the next dimension of this church is not the profound ministry of a great shepherd and you have one. But the next dimension of this church is you being empowered to walk out of these doors and to bring the souls of men in and to lay your hands on the sick and to cast out devils. I'm not here to, I'm not here to tell you how great I am. I'm here to tell you how great he is. And I'm here to tell you everything I have, you have. Everything you have, I have. And that is the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. I said, hallelujah. I was preaching in a church. An elderly man came up to me. And this elderly man said, he said, uh, he said, did you know Sister Sizemore? And I said, he said, the old Laurel Church. I said, sure, that's my great grandmother. We called her ma'am. He said, well, she had a daughter called Helen. I said, yes, Aunt Helen. And he said, uh, he said, well, I was, I had epileptic seizures from the time I was just a little child. And I was about 10 years old. And we were in the grocery store. This is the old fashioned grocery stores. Most of the young people have never seen them. They had an old screen door that opened up, had two refrigerators, one for milk, one for milk and soft drinks, and the other one for lunch meat. And, and if somebody killed a chicken or two, they'd have a fresh chicken in there for you. If, if somebody butchered a hog, you'd open it up, there'd be pigtails and whatever else you need in that refrigerator. And that's how you bought it. And when it was gone, it was gone. And that's how it worked. And he said, we were in that country store. And I he said, my parents didn't go to church. Nobody went to church. We didn't know nothing about God. But he said, we were in that store. And I went into an epileptic seizure. And these seizures were so great that my tongue, it would, it would come out and I would swallow it. And he said, they, I would, it looked like, I, and on this particular day, my mother didn't have anything to help me. She screamed, he's dying, he's dying, he's dying, he's dying. But he said in the back of that store, in that grocery store, said when everybody was screaming, this boy's dying, there was a voice of a woman went, whoa, whoa, and began to speak with other tongues. He said, Sister Helen, come from the back of that store. She shook and shouted till every hairpin fell out. Her white hair was flying in the wind. He said, she picked me up. And she said, in the name of Jesus, heal this child. He said, I'm an old man. And I've never had an epileptic seizure since. That's what Satan does not want to happen. Satan doesn't want you to have power. And I didn't wait till I was 50 years old to get power because 50 years ago at 16 years old, I felt the power come on me. I got the precious anointing. I got the revelation that everything I need is in Jesus. Everything I need to do is in Jesus. I'm here to tell you, young people, you haven't seen your day yet. Quit trying to wait for something to happen. Don't expect me to blow on you, spit on you, or throw my coat on you. Everything you need is in Jesus. I'm here to tell you that you may feel like you're nothing. You may feel like you're nobody. But just ask Gideon. Gideon will say I was the least of my family. But God called me a mighty man of valor. Just ask David who's not invited to the party. And God will say I choose who I choose. And God has chosen you for such a time as this in these last days to be the mighty people of God that will shake this earth with fire and with power and with the anointing in Jesus name. Lay hands on somebody close to you and say God reveal it to us. Come on God reveal it to us. Woo! And Helen and Helen couldn't pronounce the words. She only went to the second grade. And Helen never got ordained. Never was ordained. Mispronounced words called Jeremiah, Jeremiah. And in the holiness church I was raised in, our assistant pastor, he called the word determined, determined. 
And some of them would be preaching and they'd say, I'm telling you, ha, when Nebuchadnezzar, no, no, they didn't say that. They said, when the butchernizer ha, looked in that fiery furnace. Yeah. They mispronounced the words, but nobody told them that they didn't have it. Nobody didn't say, you got to have 12 steps to get it. Nobody said, do you know... When I, when I held my first revival 50 years ago, Pastor Lawrence Cornelius pastored four holiness churches in eastern Kentucky because there were not enough pastors. There were plenty of preachers, but it takes a pastor's heart, brothers and sisters. And they had to have a pastor, a pastor that can weep with those who are dying, a pastor that can rejoice with those who are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And Lawrence Cornelius pastored for, so somebody said, what did they do? What did they do when they, if they only had a pastor the first Sunday of the month at, at, at Winding Blade, second Sunday of the month at River Hill, third Sunday of the month at uh, Evans Chapel, fourth Sunday of the month at uh, Hazel Green. Well, what did they do the other weeks? Uh, they knew all, all of them knew. Uh, our pastor's not here so we've got to be strong so they exhorted one another they testified they sang they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and there wasn't none of them still walking a mile for a camel there wasn't any of them that didn't know how to dress properly there wasn't any of them that was still cussing at the same time there wasn't any of them that didn't have enough get up and go to get to the house of God there wasn't any of them that would dare be so backslid to lay in a bed and waller like a hog among your sheets while it's Sunday morning uh, and you got enough get up to watch your television and your hell shows uh, on a Saturday night uh, but don't have enough to get you out of the bed of laziness uh, and I'm here to tell you something uh, there's a lazy spirit right now that has fallen in America it's the laziest spirit I've ever seen in my life uh, it has spilled over in the church uh, people don't want to work in the natural and they don't want to work in the spiritual but that does not uh, that does not define Define who we are because we are different. We've got a different message. We're not going the route that everybody else is going in. We know that God's called us and God has anointed us in Jesus' name. We were having a dinner at church, and Betty, Betty's been in the church from way back in the early 60s, and, and Betty. You know, I don't get to talk to everybody. And so when I'm at a dinner, I'll go from table to table. I never eat at a dinner. I eat before I get there. So I sit down at the table, and Betty, she said, Pastor Tom, did I ever tell you about what happened in our family? I said, no. I don't know what ha happened in your family. She said, we'd moved from Barberville to Cardinal up in Harlan County, or actually might have been on the Bell County line. And the coal mines had opened up a job, and my dad had nine children. We didn't have anything. We were as poor as poor could be. So we packed up and we moved to a coal mining camp. The coal mining camp had all the little shotgun houses that went like this. You lived in a, like a rental house that gave you coal mining coins where you went to the company store. And you got these coins, and some of you know about it, and some of you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. I'm going to try to explain it to you while I'm talking here just a little bit. It was a whole different world. It's where poor people lived. It's where people didn't have anything. And he said, it looked like life was getting better. Things were getting better. Daddy was making good money in the coal mining camp. And lo and behold, my mother had a massive heart attack. They called the doctor from Pineville. He came to our house. And when he came to our house, my mother was laying there. She was totally unconscious. He examined her. He said she could have an hour. She may have two hours. But I'm not going back to Pineville. I'm going to stay here till she dies. And I'll sign the death certificate. And I'll wait. I don't know who it was, but somebody heard about the holiness people right down the Right down a, just a little bit, maybe not even a half a mile away, the little holiness church called Blackmont. They heard about the holiness people. Somebody went running down there and said, there's a family, a new family that's moved in the coal mining camp. They've got nine children. The mother's had a massive heart attack. They're all gathered around the bed. The doctor's there. He's going to pronounce her dead. She's going to die in just a few hours. 
They were at that old Black Knot church. They'd been singing and shouting. The, whoever it was ran in and said, we got an emergency prayer request. They shut that church down, brothers and sisters. They said, this is an emergency. They, they started walking across the mountain, all of them together, praying, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Have mercy on this mother. Have mercy on these lost families, Lord. Have mercy, God. They don't know you. Oh, have mercy. And about 50 something, maybe 60 people all at once come walking up that yard. The doctor's looking out the window. They said, It's the holiness people from Blackmont. And they came in. Brother The Carter was with them. There was Brother Tess Walters and his wife, Mossy. They were all coming in. And those holiness people, they never sit around. How long has she had this? And what's going on like that? What did the CAT scan say? How long was it? When did they have the last report? No, they come in going, oh, oh. They come in with power. And when they walked in, they began to pray. And when they began to pray, the power of God hit her mother. She jumped out of that deathbed and began to shout the praises all everyone in the family they knelt down beside her bed they were all saved and many of them were baptized in the Holy Ghost oh many of them were baptized there's going to be a transition I said there's going to be a transition I know a lot of times we wait to church to put on our praise but I'm telling you there's getting ready to be a transition you're going to bring it from your home you're going to bring it from your prayer meeting you're going to bring it from your house you're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving you're going to come into his courts with praise hallelujah give God a shout of praise come here Nick Nick came to our church knowing nothing absolutely nothing about the whole in this way nothing and he's good friends with a, another young man. Nick's here and the other one's way up here. And they stay, they, they, they will come spend the night at his house. And I'm, I, didn't, I didn't know when, but when I asked him to testify, he told me they was watching Tom and Jerry first. But you know, they are teenagers. <laughs> They've been watching Tom and Jerry and laughing. Well, they got tired of Tom and Jerry. And they start talking. They said, why don't we just try praying? <laughs> why don't we just see what happens? Woo! Oh, glory. They got to praying. What time it was when you started praying? Well, first we read the word, and that was at three, that was at two in the morning. And then we started praying at three in the morning. And that's when the Holy Ghost. The what? <laughs> oh, the Holy Ghost <laughs> started to move. <laughs> and we started speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Uh, listen, I, he already said I didn't grow up in this Pentecostal holiness church. Oh, but when the Spirit of God began to move, I knew it was the Spirit. Hallelujah. We started falling out. Hallelujah. And, and I was having back problems. And I didn't say this when I was uh, when he called me up there, but I got healed. He laid his hands on me. Who? Will? Will? What about there? Laying hands on each other and heal, getting healed for three hours or more. Four hours. Two teenage boys in a house start talking and reading the Bible. And oh, that's what. That's why God said, "I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans." He said, I hate anything that makes my people weak, that makes my people powerless, that makes my people not have what they need to have. I pray every time you come into this house, when you leave, you feel like I could run through a troop and leap over a wall. I pray when you leave tonight, you're going to go out with a flashlight saying, where are you, devil? How you walked on me long enough, you're not walking anymore. I pray that you look your rebel, the rebel that's in your family and you say in the name of Jesus you're not going to have my children you're not going to have my wife not going to have my husband that is the power that God has given to us go ahead give God a shout of praise (laughs) oh Hallelujah. (laughs) 
John Carter just sent me his. I told Brother Carter, I said, Brother Carter, please, you're going to have to write these things down. You're going to have to write them down because I heard him from the time I was a little boy. Thee Carter. He moved in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I preached for him so much when he was pastor there at Molas. Biggest, largest church in Harlan County. One night they had to turn 50 cars. 50 cars couldn't even get there. They, they, they had them just crammed. You couldn't get in the place down there. I said, Brother Carter, write it down. Well, he did write it down. About a year before he died, his incredible, awesome handwriting. And John copied it on a copy machine and sent it to me. I got it in the mail last week. And I start reading it. And the one story says, there was a coal mine that blew up in Bell County at Pineville. And there's a young man about 20... 25 years old, handsome young man. He got, he was the only one in there. The coal mine went down and crushed him. They dug him out. And when they got him out, they thought he was dead. But he, he heard, <coughs> and they rushed him to Pineville Hospital. Pineville Hospital had just got an x ray machine. Here, those weird people came again. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I'm one of them. You can tell by the way I walk. You can tell by the way I talk. You can tell by the way that I wear my armor. I've seen a battle or two, and I'm one of them. Oh, I'm one of them. This generation have never seen women like Essie Holt that came in with their cotton dresses on, uh, with their pulled back hair. They had no conversation other than walking in the house of the Lord going, bless his name, bless his name. Whoa, whoa. They laid hands on the sick. They handled fire. They raised the dead. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about people that's got a TV program. I'm not somebody talking about somebody just wrote five books. Uh, I'm not talking about somebody that gets on their brainwashing you and telling you if you want my anointing you're going to have to give me a thousand bucks oh you hear me today that's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans but God said I want every one of you to know that you've got power in the name of Jesus you can overcome your habit here they came here they came and the bell Brother, Brother Carter's got the names of them He's got the name of the medical doctor. He's got the four names of the registered nurses. There, there's about 50 of them in the waiting room. They're in there just praising God. You can't stop them. They're out in the waiting room. They don't care. It's like my mother when I was a little boy. She walked in that Catholic hospital at St. Elizabeth Hospital. All of those nuns with those big habits on. That's back when they were so big like the flying nun. You've seen those big things like that. They had those big good young people. You know what I'm talking about? Just ask your parents and grandparents. Tell them look it up on the internet. And I'm not against Catholic people. I'm just saying that's what they look like. They had those great big hats on like that. And here mom would come in shaking that ponytail, carrying that flat top guitar, and their eyes would get that big. Uh oh, here comes one of them. I'm about ready to run. Mom, here comes one of them. I pray that the revelation of God gets so powerful in your heart that the moment you get out of bed, that hell begins to shake and demons begin to tremble because you are one of them that's filled with the purpose and the plan of God in your life. Woo! They're in that waiting room. They're praying and they're shouting. Hair's falling out. Bobby pins are falling out. Some of, them are, some of them are speaking in tongues that don't make sense. Some of them are saying things like, me, 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 mo, mo, ma, 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 me, 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 me. They go, listen to that bunch of jibber jabbish. Listen to that bunch of holy rollers. <laughs> oh, they call us holy rollers. That's all right. 
That's what mom sang. They call us holy rollers. That's all right. Well, they got to praying, got to shouting. The power. And in, in his writings, I don't remember this. I don't remember him telling this. But in his writings, the people, the people saw a cloud come over top of Pineville Hospital. Mm-mm-mm. A sign, a sign, a sign, a sign. They saw a cloud coming over the Pineville Hospital. And the doctor's name that's written in the documentation. And the four registered nurses. They had him under the x-ray machine. And while that cloud began to form. While the saints began to pray. As the spirit began to move. All at once the fingers began to pop back in place under the x-ray machine. The foot went where it ought to be. The knee went where it ought to be. The pancreas went where it ought to be. The lungs filled up the way they should have filled up. The kidneys went back in place. All at once in the documentation that bed began to shake under that x-ray machine and they had to pull it off of him and when they pulled it off of him he come off of there speaking in tongues and shouting the praises of God I'm not talking about something that happened in another country I'm talking about something that happened with people I know with families I know Oh. Uh, oh. 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 On the way up here, I don't know why, but the Holy Ghost brought to my remembrance 2008 or 7. 2007. When they called me to preach at Winterfest with 22,000 teenagers. And I'm over 50. I have a grandbaby. And they didn't tell me not to wear a suit. So I looked just like this. And one of the pastor's daughters, she said, when you walked in, we said, oh no. It's a preacher. And her sister said, no, that's not what you said. You said, oh, no, it's an old preacher. I started preaching at quarter till nine. At quarter after nine, or 20 till nine, at quarter after nine. I heard a rumble. Oh, oh, I heard a rumble. I'm about ready to get finished so you all can come up here and get ready. We're going to close in just a minute. Hallelujah. I heard a rumble. Get on that drum, please. I mean, would you please get on that drum? I want to hear a rumble on that bass drum. I got to reenact this thing. I feel a reenactment coming on. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Yay! I've got it. I'm going to keep it. I'm not getting rid of it. You can have your little deadbeat religious machine if you want it. But I've got to have the Bible, apostolic, full gospel, spirit-filled, upper room power. Yeah, Lord. At 20 after 9, a rumble. A rumble. How are you going to rumble the rumble? I heard a rumble. Yeah. I said, and I've been in one earthquake. I said, is this an earthquake? What's happening? And in the third tier up, and every time I preach this in the south, I get eyewitnesses that say, I was one of them. Teenagers like these young people here. Not interested. It was an old man up there preaching. I had on 
a suit. Duh. But all at once, one of them went to say something to the other one, and it went, I took a I promise you, they could not speak in English. I had a 15 year old young man with me. He's never spoken in tongues before nor after. He's a married man, I've been in his 30s now, got two little children. A very successful businessman still don't speak in tongues. But we got in the car at midnight on the way home. He said, Pastor Tom. I said, what? He said, I couldn't speak in my regular language. I said, what? He said, I couldn't. I tried. I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost brought it back to my remembrance. Because in that service... 10,000 that had never spoken in tongues. The church of God got their names and addresses to verify. 10,000. I left at midnight. There were 14,000 of them still laying on the floor. I had to go back home to preach. They could not. I know what that was like 60 years ago, brothers and sisters. Alma Richardson on one side and Georgia Gamble on the other. Alma wore her hair so tight, her eyebrows stuck straight up. Georgie's braids were wrapped around her head. Those Appalachian women, I don't know if you've ever seen those mountain women had the black eyes. They got that, they got that, those black eyes are black as coal. It's like the Melungeons. They're, 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 they're African, they're uh, Italian, they're Spanish. It's a mixture of all, of about everything that fell in the Appalachian mountains. And they had those jet black eyes. And they shook. Georgie's braids went down. Her hair fell down almost to the back of her knees. Alma, power God hit Alma. Her, her top knot went down. Her eyebrows dropped about two inches. And at 1030 at night, six years old, I fell back and I lost my natural language. Mom had bought me a brand new pair of Levi's and I didn't have a belt on and I was a skinny child and I was holding one pair holding my britches up going Mom put her guitar down she took her handkerchief and tied my belt loops together they carried me at home speaking in tongues I went to bed speaking in tongues oh I've got it I've got it I've got it. You can talk about it all you want to. But until the church comes back, we're there, brothers and sisters. We're at the point. If we don't have God, we're gonna, we have to have him. There's no if about it. Let's all stand together. Hallelujah. God puts things in the old covenant to bring revelation to the new. And Ruth's been out there with all the girls. The Bible says she's been out in the fields with the handmaidens. All those girls are pretty. All of them are very good girls. But only one gets to be the bride. And this isn't, this isn't, this is there just to show you the power of the, the specialness of the bride. Naomi said, honey, you're getting ready to marry the Lord of the harvest. Naomi is the word. She said, baby, three things you got to do, honey. Wash yourself, anoint yourself, and put on your best garment. If you're looking for a church, you better find out one, better find one that's washed holy. One that carries the anointing and one that's got on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I feel like running all over this house. 
because I think I've just looked right in the eye of the bride of Christ I believe I'm in a church that's washed up by the washing of water by the word of God I believe I'm in a church that carries the anointing and these signs shall follow them that believe and I believe I'm in a church that says I know the world is oppressed and depressed but I'm putting on my garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness my heaven.